Okay, so this is 3.5 still. Or just, it's just going to be the second part of the video. So in Canvas, I already have the first part, right? Everything we covered the first day, the beginning of the section, the game plan, right? That's pretty much what's at the beginning of the section. And then we covered examples one and two. So we're going to finish up the last two examples in this section, and then we'll move on to 3.6. So in 3.3, which was another concept we covered on Thursday, this was zero, OK? And so what we did is if this was zero, we solved what was called an auxiliary equation, right? And in 3.5, we still have to do that. We still have to pretend that this is zero and solve that auxiliary equation. However, after we do that, we have more steps after that, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is first figure out what that auxiliary equation is. So you're just taking the coefficients and then the basic way to remember it is the number of primes you have, that's going to be the exponent, right, for your variables. Um, so this is going to be a one coefficient, and then what variable? M squared. And then here it's going to be minus two coefficient, and then what kind of variable? Just M. And then this is going to be a one coefficient, but do I need a variable? This is not prime, right? So I'm not going to have any m's here, OK? And then equal it to 0. And I think we can factor that one. Let me just make sure that's what I'm thinking it is. But if I multiply negative 1 and negative 1, is that positive 1? And then if I combine them, is that negative 2? OK, so then we're good. So we get m equal to 1, but twice, right? So it's just 1 and 1. It's a repeated 1 which means in this 3.3 section, and I don't have my notes with me, so if I make a mistake, I should be okay, but <laughs> if I make a mistake on my formulas, let me know. So the repeated version is the case two, right? So that means that I'm going to have a YC that is going to be um, C1 and then E to the one X or just X plus C2, and for the repeated one, we add in a factor of x, and then e to the x, right? So that's the formula that we found from section 3.3 if the problem were homogeneous, right? And we need this because this is our y1, and this, actually the whole thing, is our y2. And we need those for all the Ronskine bits of 3.5. Right? So there's a bunch of formulas um, that we need to know. One is the Ronskine. So for the Ronskine, we're, I'm just going to review, so don't mind me, but I'm going to write all this out. Okay. So y1 and y2, but then you have to do y1 prime and y2 prime. Right. That's how you get the Ronskine. So y1 is e to the x, y2 is x e to the x. And then if I take the derivative of e to the x, what is that? e to the x. This, though, I have to take the derivative of that. And that's going to be a little bit more complicated because you have something with x times something else with x, right? So you have to use the product rule. So we have the first factor times the derivative of the second factor plus the second factor times the derivative of the first, which is just the one, right? So I don't really even need it because it's going to just be e to the x, right? So I'm going to erase my times one. And if I'm calculating the Ronskine, I'm basically multiplying this, these two terms together, and then I'm going to subtract what I get when I multiply those two together. Now remember, you're taking a monomial, one term, times a binomial, two terms. So you have to take this guy and distribute it to both, OK? When I do that, you end up having to add the exponents for e. So this becomes x e to the 2x plus e to the 2x minus, and then I have to multiply these guys. I get x e to the 2x. So when I combine those like terms, all I end up with is e to the 2x. OK, so that's W. We'll use that later, right? Twice, but we'll use it later. Now what we want to write is W1. 
and W1 can be found by replacing the first column, that's what the one stands for, by zero and then the function that I was given. So this is if the problem were homogeneous, but the problem is not homogeneous, right? It has this whole function over here on this side. So that's gonna be what goes here. And then y2 and y2 prime stay exactly the same, so I'm just gonna rewrite those terms. I've already done the hard part, which was the derivative stuff. It's just now putting people where they belong and then doing the wrong scheme. So here, when I multiply these two, what am I gonna get? Because mm -hmm, even when I distribute the zero, zero times both of those guys is just a big fat zero, right? And then minus these two things multiplied together. So I'm gonna end up with x e to the two x over one plus x squared which is just means it's going to be negative. Can't barely see my little minus sign, but it's there. <laughs> okay. Well, that's not making, well, it might not be so bad. I can see it already. Isn't this guy going to cancel that guy when I put it at the bottom? So it's going to end up being stuff without ease, which is great. Ease make it more complicated. Let's go find W2. So this time we're gonna replace the second column with the zero as if it were homogeneous and then the function because it's not. And then the first column is gonna stay exactly as it was in the original W, which is e to the x and e to the x. And I'm going to do the same thing before to calculate the Ron scheme. That's the determinant. So these two multiply together minus these two multiply together, which is just zero. So you basically end up with e to the 2x over 1 plus x squared. Okay. Now we got to go find the particular solution, right? And the particular solution is this. It is u1 times y1 plus u2 times y2. Well, that's great. We have y1 and we have y2, but we don't have u1 and u2, okay? So you have to remember the formulas on how to get that. u1 is found by taking the integral of w1 over w. And u2 is found by taking, pretty similarly, right? w2 over w. So kind of re-going over all of our formulas from the first video, right? So u1 is going to be, dun, dun, dun. Instead of writing it like that, I'm gonna write it like this. And you tell me if this is equivalent. Is that equivalent? Right, and instead of writing the w downstairs, you just write it as a multiplying of one over w, okay? Because if I were to multiply these, I would have this fraction, right? But it helps me to reduce better if they're separated, okay? So I'm going to take W1, which is this fraction, and because it was a fraction was the whole reason why I wanted them separated, times 1 over W, and W was e to the 2x. So now I can visually see that the e to the 2x's are going to cancel, okay? Whereas if I were to have not done it like that, I would have had a fraction on top of a fraction, which gets a little confusing, okay? So this guy is going to cancel with that guy. And I'm running out of paper, so I'm going to move this up. And dun, 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 put it here. So I'm going to continue U1 down here, and then I'll continue U2 on the other half, okay? So u1 is now going to become negative x over one plus x squared dx. Now, can I use u substitution here? That's the question, okay? Let's see. If I let, I don't wanna use u, because I already have u, right? I don't want you to get those two confused. I'm, and I don't wanna use w either. Give me another letter besides x, y, w, or u. 
or M. <laughs> Z, okay, good, that's a good one. So Z is going to be the denominator. And then Z prime or DZ would be zero plus two X DX, is that right? And I have the X, that's the hard part. The little numbers, the coefficients, they're easy to put in and take out, right? So basically, if I divide both sides by 2, I can replace the x dx that I have with this, okay? So I'm going to replace, um, I'm going to leave that negative there. The x dx is going to become dz over 2. I'm just going to leave it like that. And then the denominator is going to become z. I'm going to clean this up. I'm going to write the negative one half outside and then just say dz over z. What is the integral of dz over z? Mm -hmm. And so then I'm going to go back and substitute it, right? It should have been 1 plus x squared. Now that's always going to be positive, so I don't really need the bars. The bars are just to guarantee that it will be positive, but I know that x squared is always going to be positive, and if I add one, that's always going to be positive, right? So I don't have to worry about the bars anymore. And so you'll see the difference, right? When you go into the back of the book, it won't have bars around 1 plus x squared. But if it were just x, it would have the bars, okay? Okay, so that's U1, so that's great. But now let's go back and figure out what the heck is U2 supposed to be. So again, I'm not gonna leave it in its fraction form because this guy is a fraction and that's too complicated. So we're gonna rewrite it like this so that we'll end up with a fraction times a fraction and that's a little bit easier to look at, okay? So for here, we're going to get W2, which is this guy, times 1 over w, and w you can't see, but it is this guy up here, e to the 2x, and then the dx. And the same thing's going to happen like in w1, or u1, sorry. Those are going to cancel. So you end up with this integral here. Now since we've already done the u sub stuff, Notice that when I did it, I needed an x in the numerator, right? Do I have an x? And that's a problem because you can put numbers in and out, right? Just with fractions and signs and all that kind of stuff. But you can't throw in variables because there's no way to remove it, okay? There's no way to undo that variable without changing the problem, okay? So I'm going to check in my book because I think there is a formula that I can use. Haha, -ha, tangent. There it is. Now I don't see, I actually don't see it on my formula thingy, but I see it. I'm looking at the book. Let me zoom out. I don't see it on my book. Notice if you look at all these integrals, you don't see 1 over x squared plus 1 or 1 over u squared plus a squared, anything like that. Oh, yeah, you do. Yeah, it's down here. Haha, -ha. I was going to use the one over there, <laughs> but it is over here. So good. So I found it there. Now, in my case, my variable, because of the du, my variable is a u, right? which means that that should be my variable squared. I have dx, which means I should have x squared. Do I have that? I do, right? <coughs> but then I should have plus some constant squared. What is the constant in my case? So that when I square it, I get 1, right? Because 1 is what I have here. So what is a? u is going to be x, and then what is the a? 1. Okay, just if that was a 4, right, then what would the a be? 2. Okay, 
That's the only reason why I'm going over that. So according to that formula, it's supposed to be 1 over a, 1 over 1, which is just 1, 10 inverse of u over a, x over 1, which is just x. And then plus c, but we know that for the u's, we don't have to put the plus c's, right? They come out automatically. Oh, you can't see me. I'm way up here. <laughs> Sorry. So according to the formula, this is what I should end up with, the tan inverse of x, okay? Just by applying the um, rule number 36 on the integral chart. Well, that's nice, then I don't have to mess with it, right? Because it's already done. It's like as simple as it's going to look. So it's good. So now I need to figure out what yp looks like. So yp is going to be u1 times y1, which was e to the x, plus u2 times y2, which was x e to the x. Now the only way that they will clean this up is they like the exponential parts in front. They don't like them behind the ln. And that's just a formality thing. It's not that it would be incorrect to write it that way. It's just they prefer your variables, then your exponentials, and then your trigs or logarithmic functions. Okay? It's just a formality there. So that's why p. So that's the particular part of the solution, right? But we need to give them the entire solution, okay? Every variation of any possible solution, okay? So if I want to give them all the solutions in one equation, I have to take the yc and add the yp to it, okay? And the yc is what we got when we pretended it was a homogeneous, right? So we pretended it was homogeneous, we ended up with this, oops, and we just finished finding yp, which is all of this. And so this entire thing is going to be your solution, okay? I have one more example, but I think this page was intended for that problem, <laughs> but I used it. So the homework set is down here, but I'll put it on the screen again right when we finish example four, okay? Oops. So for example four, So, so far I think we have enough to do these. So I think these three were from example one. These were from example two. I think this one you do from example three. And then these three are gonna be like, I think example four, okay? So you gotta have a mix. That's why I picked the examples that I did, okay? Um, for example four, how is it different from the other problems? Yes, we have initial values. So it's already a lot, I know it is, but this is like the longest one <laughs> there is because it's not homogeneous, right? Which means I have to do the Ron schemes and the U1s and the U2s, okay? Which that is what makes it long, right? But then after I'm done, I have to go back in and actually figure out what C1 and C2 are, okay? So they're probably not gonna give you a problem that's going to give you some crazy thing like this <laughs> um, just because they're trying to be a little bit nice so I have a feeling that ours is not going to be that crazy when we're done okay it's not going to have tangents and ln's and things like that in it okay so let's go ahead and first do the auxiliary equation part so we can figure out what y1 and y2 are because that's how we start the whole Ronskine stuff so my auxiliary equation in this case is going to be m squared plus 2m minus 8 equal to 0. Equal to 0 because we're pretending it's homogeneous, right? Then if I solve this, hmm, can I solve that? I think I can, right? m minus 4 and m plus 2? No, the other way around, right? 
Dang, those multiply to give me negative 8, and when I combine them, I get positive 2. There we go, now we got it. So we get m equals negative 4 and m equals positive 2, which means yc is going to be c1 e to the negative 4x plus c2 e to the 2x. It's case 1, right, from 3.3? Because there are two different uh, solutions here. So we're following the formula from 3.3. And this is basically 3.3, <coughs> right? If this was a big fat zero, all of that was a zero, then I've finished with the problem from section 3.3. 3.5 is when it's not a zero, right? And because it's not a zero here, I have to keep going. So now I'm gonna set up my RON scheme. So I'm gonna put Y1, which is just this part, not the constant part, and Y2, which is just this part, again, not the constant part. What is the derivative of the y1? Mm-hmm. Negative 4x, yes. What is the derivative of this one? Mm-hmm. 2e to the 2x, good. And then now we're going to do our determinant, right? So multiply those together. But remember, these have the same base. So you add the exponents. What do you get when you add negative 4x and 2x? You get e to the what? Negative 2x. Then minus, and then I gotta multiply these guys. So I get a negative 4e, and when I add these exponents, I get the same thing, negative 2x. So how many e to the negative 2x's do I have then? Six, because this is two and that's really a plus, right? So I have six e to the negative two x's. So we'll use that later. Now let's see. Let's find w1. So I replace the first column, that's what the one is for, with the zero as if it were homogeneous and then with my function because it's not. The second row stays exactly the same as the original w. and then you do your determinant. So that's gonna be zero minus, be careful here. I might as well just write it out just so that we don't make a mistake. If you have to write out your distributions, that's fine. You just have to remember if you're not gonna write this out, when you're minusing it, pretend this is a negative e to the negative two x and then distribute a negative e to the negative two x and you'll get the same thing, okay? Because you're minusing these terms, okay? If you don't pretend that this is a negative, you're, you might be inclined to put your second term as a minus, and your second term is not going to end up as a minus, okay? Because when I distribute this, it's going to be a negative 2 e to the what? 0. And then a negative and a negative is going to be a plus e to the what? Just 1x. Good. So I end up with e to the x minus 2, actually, right? This is just 1, so it's really like just a negative 2 there. And then I just rearrange the terms, right? Commutative property. So I could push the front term in the back, and it's the same. Okay. So I don't want you to just put a minus sign and then distribute this, right? Because then you won't get the same answer. Okay, so that's W1. W2, let's go see what that looks like. So the second um, column is going to get replaced with the 0, and then our F. The first column is going to stay the same as the original. So e to the negative 4x, and then negative 4e to the negative 4x. Now we're going to do the same thing again, determine it. So this times this. But I'm doing positive here, right? So I don't have to worry about the negative. I'm just going to distribute the e to the negative 4x. So I'm going to get 2e to the what? Yep. Minus e to the what? Negative 5x. And then when I multiply this way, I'm going to subtract what? 
a zero. So we just end up with these two terms. They are not like terms, so we can't put them together. And now I'm able to set up my, um, my integrals to find the u1 and the u2, right? We need those to get the other half of the solution. So let's see, u1 is going to be w1, which is these guys. Oops, I put a two up there. There should not be a two up there. It's just this. Over w, which is six e to the negative two x dx. Okay, first I'm gonna pull out the one six. And I'll do this step by step. I won't try to do too much so that you can follow what I'm doing. Then, in order for me to not have this downstairs, I can bring it up. But if I do that, it's actually going to become a positive e to the 2x, right? Ah, trying to squish it in there. There we go. Okay, and then if I distribute that, I will actually get e to the 3x minus 2e to the 2x dx. Now there's a couple ways you can do it. You can leave the 1, 6 out there and just separate this part, putting everything in a bracket or you can bring the 1 6 with each one but i am going to eventually want to split i could do it without splitting it but i don't know how great everyone is at integrating so <laughs> i'm just going to keep algebraically manipulating it until it's in its simplest form for me to go use a formula okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take the 1 6 and just apply it to each integral And then here, I'm going to put the minus 2, the whole number 2, and then the 6 from the 1, 6, e to the 2x. So I get 1, 6, the integral of e to the 3x dx minus 1 third e to the 2x. And then if you remember the little trick, right? If you're going to integrate e to something when it's not just x, you have to make sure you divide by that coefficient, right? So this will become one third e to the three x. And if you're not sure, take the derivative of that inside the parentheses. If you take the derivative of this, once you have a three in the front and it'll cancel the other three, right? So I will still have e to the three x, okay? Here, I'm gonna have one half e to the two x. And again, if I take the derivative of this, I should end up with what was inside there, if you did it correctly, right? So now I can simplify all of my fractions. I have one over 18 e to the three x minus one over six e to the two x. And that's going to be my u one, okay? I am going to do that if I, haps, if I happen to get a function that looks kind of similar to this with u2, I'm going to do it faster, okay, without having to do all these steps. But I just wanted to see where the steps are coming from, okay? So u2 is going to be w2, which is this, over w. And so here I'm going to do the same thing as I did before, the 1, 6, and I'm going to bring up the e to the negative 2x, so it's going to become e to the positive 2x. So here I already did two steps in one, right? Instead of having to do them separately, I just did it together. Okay. Then I do need to write out my step for distributing. So this is going to be 2e to the negative 4x when I add those exponents minus e to the negative 3x when I add those exponents. And then now instead of 
separating them and factoring out the coefficients and all that junk. I'm going to do it all in one. Okay, so I'm probably going to save one, two lines. I'm just going to get to the answer already. Okay, I may have to simplify it, but I'll get there. So I have the 1, 6 for both terms, right? Doesn't this 1, 6 apply to both of those? Right? But then I'm going to get 2 over negative 4 e to the negative 4x. My second term has a minus sign in front of it. So 1, 6 again times a coefficient of 1 over negative 3 e to the negative 3x. I didn't put a negative 1 because this minus is already there, right? You don't want two negatives here, otherwise you're turning it into a positive, aren't you? Okay, so be careful. And then I'm just going to clean this up. 1, 3, so I get negative 1 12th e to the negative 4x. Here these will turn positive, and I'll get positive 1 over 18 e to the negative 3x. And so that's what I get for that image. Now, if you're doing this on the test, these are not that complicated. It's just a lot of algebra. And then if you have to keep splitting this up and separating it and doing all of that, it just takes a little bit of time. Okay. But the integrating is not really that bad. You're just applying the exponential rule. Okay. So not only do you have to be careful with all your algebra steps, make sure you write neatly enough so that you can tell your twos from your sevens and things like that, right? Because <laughs> that's happened on the test before. And it sucks to even just lose a point for that because it's something silly, right? So make sure you write clearly. I know I'm guilty of writing messy when I'm in a hurry. And then it looks ugly. Okay. So let's see. We have u1, we have u2. So now we can figure out what yp looks like. It's going to be u1... times y1. What the heck was y1? All the way up here. See it right there? So e to the negative 4x plus u2, which we just finished finding. Times y2, which was e to the 2x. So this is yp. Now I definitely need to clean that up. So first we'll start by distributing these guys and then we'll see if we have any like terms. So we get 1 over 18 e to the what? Yep. And then minus 1 6 e to the what? Negative 2x. And then I'm not going to put a plus because it's going to be plus a negative, right? So I'm going to put negative 1 12th e to the what? Mm -hmm. And then a plus and a plus is a plus. 18 e to the negative x. Now this guy can be written as 2 over 12, right? And that the same as 1 6? And I'm only doing that so I can have a common denominator, right? Or I could have just typed into my calculator. <laughs> but 1 18th and 1 18th, that one's easy. 2 18th, right? And then these two, negative 2 12 and negative 1 12 is negative 3 12 And then just reduce them. So I have 1 9th e to the negative x minus 1 4th e to the negative 2x. And that's yp. That's the second half. So if I want the whole equation, it's going to be yc plus yp. And luckily, this is a nice problem because it's not too complicated to take the derivative of these guys. I don't have product rule. I don't have any crazy other stuff going on, right? It's just rewrite the exponential and then multiply by the derivative of the exponent, right? So pretty much multiply by the coefficient of the exponent. So when I do y prime, this is going to become negative 4 
c1 e to the negative 4x. This is going to become 2 c2 e to the 2x. This is going to become a negative 1 times this, so negative 1 ninth e to the negative x. That's going to become a negative 2. So what's going to happen with negative 1 fourth times a negative 2? You get positive what? 1 half. And now I can use my initial conditions. So just FYI, because they were written a long time ago, these were the two initial conditions. Okay, so I'm going to plug in 0 for all my x's in the top equation and set it equal to 1, right? And then for this one, I'm going to plug in 0 for all my x's in the y prime, but then set the answer equal to 0. Okay, so that's going to get me my system of equations. I'm going to have C1, and what happens when this goes to 0? The whole exponent becomes 0, right? And what is e to the 0? Just 1. So I don't even need to write e's anymore here, okay? Same thing's going to happen with the term with C2, the same thing with the 1 ninth, and the same thing with the 1 fourth. All those exponents are going to become zeros, which means they're all just going to be factors of 1 which means it doesn't affect the terms at all. For the bottom one, that's going to be equal to 1, because it says so. When I plug in that, I'm still going to end up with 4C1 plus 2C2 minus 1 ninth plus 1 half, and this one's going to get equal to 0. Now you could clean it up. Those fractions are just fractions, right? They're just numbers. They're going to get all combined anyway. Or you could clean it up so that it doesn't have any fractions anymore. However you want to solve the system, that's up to you. For me, I would probably just multiply the top equation by 4 so I can cancel the C1s right away and then deal with all the other mess afterward. Okay? So I'm going to take this and multiply it by 4, which means I'm going to get 4C1 plus 4C2 plus 4 ninths minus 4 over 4 equal to 4. I didn't try to play with it or anything. I just literally multiplied it, right? I didn't mess around with it too much. And then we put these together. So negative 4C1 and 4C1 are going to wipe out the C1s. I get 6C2. That's actually going to give me 3 ninths, right? And then this is going to give me negative 1 half. And that's going to give me 4. Basically, I have a half and I'm taking away a whole, right? So I'm going to end up with a negative half. Once I combine this, I could just move it over. Okay? So let me see. That's going to be 6 minus 9, which is negative 3 over 18. What is negative 3 over 18? It's actually 1 over 6. And so then I add that over. Twenty-five over six. And then if I divide by six, I'm gonna get twenty-five over thirty-six. I mean you can use your calculator for all the arithmetic, right? That's not that big of a deal. I would even just to double check me. Where's my calculator? <laughs> I always tell people, I joke around, but it's kind of true too. The more calculus and stuff you learn, the more the basic stuff you forget. Or just, you don't even, it's so easily to get it all confused again. So let's see. Mm, this one here, so let me see, 3 ninths minus 1 half, negative 1 6. And so then I did 4 plus 1 6, and I got 25 over 6, and then I divided by 6, and I got 25 over 36. Okay, good. I just wanted to make sure that I did that correctly. Because in order for me to find C1, I'm going to have to use that number, right? And I don't want to use the wrong number. And all I did was combine all of these to so make sure that these were right. 
negative 1 ninth and positive 4 ninths was easy, right? Because you just combine the numerators. This one I had 1 half minus 4 over 4, and that was negative 1 half. So I was okay. But we got to go back. And I would go back to the top one before I multiplied by 4 because it has just C1 all by itself, right? So let's go back and plug what we got for C2. And let's figure out what C1 is. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna figure out what number is right here. 25 over 36 plus 1 ninth minus 1 fourth it tells me positive 5 ninths and then if I minus the 5 ninths 1 minus 5 ninths C1 is going to equal 4 ninths so then great I have C1 and I have C2 but that's not the answer the answer is y equals 4 ninths e to the negative 4x plus 25 over 36 e to the 2x plus 1 ninth e to the negative x minus 1 fourth e to the negative 2x. And you can't combine any of those, right? They all have different exponents. So this is just the final answer for that one. I don't have to mess around with it anymore. So it's a doozy, right? It's a big one. 3.6 is not going to take us this long <laughs> to do it. It's a little trick, and then once you know it, you're it's like 3.3, .3, okay? <laughs> so let me stop the video here. I'm going to go grab my 3.6.